Demolition Man, a battle of the future between the 20th century's most dangerous cop and most ruthless criminal. Released in 1993, Sylvester Stallone stars as LAPD Sergeant John Spartan, aka the Demolition Man, who is after the city's most feared crime lord, Simon Phoenix, played by Wesley Snipes. And after an explosive hostage raid gone wrong, both Spartan and Phoenix are cryogenically frozen, where they both wake up in the year 2032 to continue their battle to destroy one another. Despite the fact that the new world that they have woken up to has considerably changed and is now seemingly crime free. Spartan must kick back into action to stop Phoenix once and for all, where he gets help from fellow cop Huxley, played by Sandra Bullock, in this action-packed science fiction guilty pleasure that stands out as a testament to just how badass the 90s were. So buckle up and get ready to eat some Taco Bell. Or is that Pizza Hut? And to use seashells for toiletry issues. As we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Demolition Man, the Stallone fan favorite of which to this day still brings a smile to fans. So let's check it out. Number 10, original choice for the hero and villain. Both Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes do a pretty awesome job in Demolition Man as the movie's hero and villain, and are both equally enjoyable, and it's hard to imagine anyone else but the two iconic actors in the roles. However, originally John claude Van Damme and Steven Seagal were considered to play the leading parts of Demolition Man. But it didn't work as both actors wanted to play the Spartan character, as neither actor wanted to be the villain. When Stallone got on board to play Spartan, his immediate choice for the villain, Simon Phoenix, was Jackie Chan. But he turned the role down because once again, he didn't want to play a villain, fearing how Chinese audiences would react seeing him in a villainous role. So Wesley Snipes was subsequently cast in the part. However, it wasn't all fun and games for the actor, as he hated his hairdo he had to have for the movie, and immediately shaved it off after filming. Point Break actress Laurie Petty was cast as the female lead of Huxley, but left the project after just two days of filming, which according to producer Joel Silver was over creative differences, to which a young Sandra Bullock took over and played the part. Number 9, Stallone made Demolition Man back to back with Cliffhanger. Stallone was a busy man in 1993, as that year he had another big action movie come out with Cliffhanger, which like Demolition Man was a spectacular event movie, where Stallone plays a professional mountain climber caught up in a heist of the US Treasury. In fact, the two movies were so closely filmed to one another, both movies even crossed paths somewhat, as in the making of documentary of Cliffhanger, Stallone hosts the show while wearing his Demolition Man police uniform, suggesting he literally had to take time off while working on the set of Demolition Man, in order to speak about his other big action movie of that year. And he really must have been pressed for time if he couldn't even change clothes. I always thought the documentary was weird, because Stallone is talking about his new upcoming movie while in his Demolition Man uniform. And it used to make me think, well which movie are you talking about Sylvester? Cliffhanger was released on May 28, 1993, and Demolition Man was released on October the 8th, 1993, and Cliffhanger performed better at the box office, making $255 million, to Demolition Man still fairly impressive $159 million. Number 8. The Fighting Talents of Wesley Snipes It'll have to take someone pretty tough to stand up to Stallone, a veteran action movie star who has made a career out of being tough. And Wesley Snipes was a perfect match for the cinematic tough guy. Maybe a little too much, as while filming his fight scenes, Snipes was so fast with his combat, his moves couldn't be filmed properly on camera and ended up looking blurry so we can only imagine the speed of Snipes' fighting ability. In order to stop the blurry effect from taking place, Snipes was asked to slow down his fighting choreography so people can, you know, actually see him fight. If there's a lesson to be learned here, it's no annoying Wesley Snipes. He is so fast, he will defeat you and you wouldn't even know what happened. 
Number 7. Alternative Title Time and time again in my show, I've often spoken about when movies have their overseas releases to which names and titles get changed, which often sometimes even gets lost in translation, giving them the strangest of names. Well, in a bizarre case, when Demolition Man came out in Kuwait, it was retitled to Rambo the Destroyer, which was obviously an attempt to home in on Stallone's recognizability as the character John Rambo. Despite the fact that Demolition Man clearly isn't a Rambo movie, nor does it resemble one. We can only assume that in 1993, when movie audiences were going to see Rambo the Destroyer at movie theaters in Kuwait, they must have thought they were watching one bizarre Rambo movie, where Rambo fights an evil criminal in the future after being cryogenically frozen. Actually, on second thought, Rambo in the future kicking ass and having to figure out how to use toilet seashells? Yeah, I would totally pay to see that. Number 6. Action Figures So in the tradition of Robocop and Terminator 2, Demolition Man, a violent, futuristic, R-rated movie had its own action figure toy lineup for kids. Yet for kids, clearly too young to go and see the movie, but what the hell, these action figures were awesome. Okay, the figures didn't look too exciting and were maybe lacking with features, but when I was a kid, I got the Spartan figure, and I was just happy to have an action figure of Sylvester Stallone, as it looked just like him, so that was pretty cool. In fact, down here in Australia, the Demolition Man action figure lineup came out the same time as the last action hero lineup, as both movies came out that same year. And I also had the Jack Slater action figure, which of course looked just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I used to make Stallone and Schwarzenegger fight it out. But I'm not going to say who won in my little Arnie vs. Stallone toy battles. I'll leave that up to you guys to guess. Number 5. The song came out long before the movie. Demolition Man's musical score was composed by Elliot Goldenfall, who previously composed Alien 3 and would go on to compose Batman Forever and Heat. And a tie-in song was released with the movie, incidentally called Demolition Man, which was written by Sting and performed by Grace Jones. However, what's interesting about this song is that it was originally released in 1981, a whole 12 years before the release of Demolition Man the movie. And it makes me wonder if the movie was named after the song, or if they just found out that there was already an existing song called Demolition Man and just used it for the film. The movie uses a remixed version of the song, so it was updated to give it more of an early 90s beat, along with new leading vocals by Sting and a music video. So it's nice that the production could get an old song that kind of slipped by many years earlier and breathe new life into it. Number 4. Taco Bell vs Pizza Hut In Demolition Man, it's made clear that a popular restaurant to visit in the future is Taco Bell as the popular food spot is mentioned several times in the movie, as it's described to have won the quote, franchise war. And thus, all restaurants are now Taco Bell. My reward is dinner and dancing at Taco Bell. I mean, I like Mexican food, but come on. However, it was felt that people outside America wouldn't know what Taco Bell is. So for some countries outside the States, it was changed to Pizza Hut, which is more of a globally known food enterprise. Yeah, and my reward is dinner and dance in a Pizza Hut. I mean, hey, I like a big fat piece of pizza, but come on. It made sense as both Pizza Hut and Taco Bell was owned by the same corporation, that being Yum Brands. So if you ever watch Demolition Man outside the States, chances are you're going to get less Taco Bell and more Pizza Hut. And it's true. Even here in Australia, I always thought it was Pizza Hut that was the restaurant of choice in the future. I only found out while doing research for this episode that in the States it was Taco Bell. So yeah, you can imagine how weird I feel right now. Also, it seems that in the future, people can't seem to get enough of Lethal Weapon 3, which is weird. And I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that Lethal Weapon 3 came out the same year as Demolition Man, and like Demolition Man, was distributed by Warner Brothers. Number 3. Lawsuit Upon the release of Demolition Man, a Hungarian science fiction writer whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce as I don't want to get it wrong and insult him, claimed that the story of Demolition Man is heavily influenced by a science fiction novel he wrote called Fight of the Dead. Published in 1986, like Demolition Man, it's a story about a terrorist and a soldier whom are enemies, whom both get cryogenically frozen only to wake up in the 22nd century, in a new world where violence no longer exists. 
The author claimed that Demolition Man is 75% his creation. However, he never went through with a lawsuit, fearing that it would cost him too much to take on Hollywood. So is it a coincidence? Or was someone in Demolition Man's creative process consciously or unconsciously heavily influenced by the novel? We may never know, but it still makes for an interesting behind the scenes story. Number two, comic books and video games. So to coincide with the release of Demolition Man, DC Comics released a four-part comic book adaptation based on the movie, which I always find interesting when DC does this, as it's usually Marvel who do the movie adaptations. Anyway, the covers to the comics are interesting. I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's just something strange about the artwork. Like here, Sly's arm looks really off, and this cover where the characters look a little cartoonish. I like this one where it looks like Stallone is ready to go to town with his stick of justice and beat some wrongdoers with it. However, the illustrations in the comics themselves are pretty spot on and has great likenesses of the characters. And it nicely recreates the atmosphere of the movie. There was also a Demolition Man game released on Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. The game is a side scroller where you have to blow absolutely everyone away. The game looks great, and as with the comic, it captures the atmosphere of the movie nicely. However, what makes it odd is that some levels change the dynamics of the game and give it an overhead view. But still, it's a game worth checking out for, if anything, nostalgic purposes. Bonus Entry – The Inspiration for Demolition Man Demolition Man was the brainchild of writer-producer Peter Lenkov. After finishing college, Lenkov moved to Hollywood to try and make it into the movie industry, where he would write several scripts, one of them being Demolition Man. There were three major influences that lit the creative spark in Lenkov's head for him to write Demolition Man. One, the Lethal Weapon movies. Hence, just like those movies, Demolition Man is a kick-ass action cop movie. As well as a fascination of celebrities being cryogenically frozen. Which is an actual thing, one of whom being Walt Disney himself. Wow, talk about Disney on ice. And finally, the as mentioned Sting and Grace Jones song, Demolition Man, which would repeatedly play in Lenkov's car, due to his car cassette player being faulty, and so it would just play that song on the tape over and over again. Originally, his script was turned down, as the executive he pitched Demolition Man to just didn't understand the concept of a frozen cop. I mean, come on, it's not that difficult to understand, surely. However, a spec script for Demolition Man would be brought by Warner Brothers, and Heather's writer, Daniel Waters, would make rewrites to the script, with even Night of the Creeps and Monster Squad director Fred Decker also making rewrites too, such as beginning the movie in 1996, unlike the original script, where the story starts in 2032, with Spartan being taken out the freezer. And so from here, Demolition Man became the movie that we all know and love. Number 1. Removed Subplot There was a deleted subplot removed from the final film of Demolition Man, revolving around Spartan's daughter, Kate. Before he gets frozen, there was a scene where he was to say goodbye to his wife and daughter, Kate, as mentioned. And then, in the end battle scene, it turns out that one of the underground dwellers is in fact Spartan's daughter, a grown-up version of her, with Spartan realising that his daughter is now a grown-up adult. There was going to be a scene where Spartan and grown-up Kate arranged to meet up for dinner sometime. Although the daughter subplot was removed from the film, the actress who played the character can still be seen in the background in some shots. I think it's a shame as I think it would have added another dimension to the Spartan character, but hey, maybe this whole father and daughter reconnecting subplot may have been a bit too heavy for what is essentially just a fun silly action movie. There's supposedly a fan theory where some people speculate that the Huxley character is Spartan's daughter, which takes the movie into all kind of territories of nope. But yeah, the identity of Spartan's grown-up daughter was originally to be addressed, but it wasn't. Demolition Man is a weird, very, very weird, but fun action movie. It's just a fun popcorn movie that's hard not to love and to get nostalgic over when you watch it now. If you have Demolition Man on DVD or Blu-ray, then it might be time to pop it back in the player and let the explosive times of 1993 roll on again. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I am not looking forward to when we adopt the seashell routine in toilets in the upcoming future. Oof. See ya!